I came to Geneva, Switzerland, 21 years ago. At first, I just helped out. Then I started making sapphire crystals. We then moved into making replacement mineral crystals. And because I found this more interesting, it gradually became my speciality. I make the crystal entirely by hand from start to finish. I choose the appropriate form for the case. I bend this form to exactly match the curve of the case. Next, I give the preliminary cut and shape to a piece of glass, which I then have to bend. The glass bends slowly of its own accord, which is a problem because it starts bending in the middle. If you have an elongated form such as this one, the flame must always be in the center to give an identical curve around the edge. You have to keep the burner moving and play with the flame. I'd say the burner is the most important stage. It has to be by hand, adjusting the flame each time the glass is bent. The flame can be very powerful, just as it can simply graze the glass. It's not easy to spot when the glass is about to bend. I play with the light, and even more so with the waves that form in the glass as it bends. No two watches are the same. I'm sent modern watches, antique watches, even museum pieces. We also make crystals for prototypes. When you're aiming for an exact shape, such as a perfect square for what looks like a square bezel, you realize the crystal doesn't fit because the bezel has been damaged, twisted or eaten away over time. So each crystal has to be adjusted by hand to fit the bezel, visually gauging each one. You really need to use your eyes and play around with the piece. It's taken years of experience for us to understand how this material responds and moves, and just how we can work it. When the watch has been put back together with its new crystal, and the hands begin to move, that's when we feel an enormous sense of pleasure at having saved another watch.